roll in. I'd like to let you know a little bit more about KPI Partners. KPI is a strategic uh, consulting and systems implementation firm focused on OBIEE, Oracle BI Applications, Hyperion, and DECA, and Exalytics. KPI Partners is the recipient of the 2012 Specialized Partner of the Year Award in the area of business intelligence applications. KPI also won the same award in 2011 when it was known as the Titan Award and is the only firm to ever win this award two years in a row. KPI also offers education and training through KPI University, and I encourage all of you to check out our blog at kpipartners.com slash blog. Now diving into the Q&A, uh, our first question is from Jay who asks, can a customer use an existing ODI deployment with BI apps 11.1.1.7.1? Thanks, Jeremy. That's a good question. Uh, you cannot use an existing ODI deployment uh, with BI applications 11.1.1.7.1. The ODI agent required for BI apps purposes is deployed inside the BI domain by the BI applications installer. And there are, there are a lot of dependencies on, on the ODI with other components of BI applications, like the load plan uh, generator. And, and it should utilize SDK libraries uh, from uh, the <coughs> ODI. So because of these dependencies, it is recommended that you use the ODI that's packaged uh, with BI applications. So if you go to the library, uh, Oracle eDelivery software download library, the media pack contains ODI. You will use that ODI um, in the software only mode and the deployment and doing installation, BI applications actually deploys that inside WebLogic uh, domain, WebLogic for the BI domain uh, as a managed server. So that is what we recommend. You cannot use an existing installation. Uh, Carl asks, what is the upgrade path from BI apps 7.9.x to 11.1.1.7.1? That's a tough question at this point for Oracle. Um, the BI application 7964 is built on Informatica. The roadmap for the next release of BI applications on Informatica is uh, 12 months and beyond. When that application arrives, there is a migration path to Informatica on that. Around the same time timeline, the applications upgrade from Informatica-based 796 series to the 11G series. So the customer will have an option to upgrade either to Informatica version of this or to the ODI version of that with some migration utilities provided. Between now and then, if a customer on 796 wishes or is required to implement an ODI based by applications, it will be deemed as a re-implementation. So they will have to do a fresh install of ODI based by applications and re-implement their customizations on top of it and then uh, use that uh, as their uh, and take it into production. Tabitha asks, is there a virtual image available for download? Uh, not at this time. That's being worked out. It should be available. Um, pretty soon. I do not have an ETA, but the virtual, uh, Oracle virtual uh, machines for 11.1.1.7.1 are, are in the works at this point. And then Mark asks, uh, just to confirm, the ODI solution does not support non-Oracle database sources? 11.1.1.7.1 uh, version of BI applications built on ODI uh, supports only Oracle as a source, Oracle technology database as a source, and Oracle as a target. The next version of BI applications on ODI, uh, which is at this point code name release 8, should uh, uh, most likely come out before the end of this year, will support non-Oracle sources and will support Oracle data warehouse as well as a data warehouse on Teradata. So that subsequent releases will support non-Oracle uh, database technologies. But most likely, all of the repositories, like Vikas pointed out, the ODI repository, uh, and, and uh, BI configuration manager repository and FS, FSM and all this will be for the near foreseeable future. They will all be supported only on an Oracle database. So if your target is Teradata, your source is on SQL Server, DB2, or any other technology, you will still need Oracle database to host these repositories. Okay, so uh, this is another follow-up. Just So, so Venkata is on, he's He's got JDE and it's on SQL Server. So is he eligible to use the BI apps new version? I think they will have to wait for the patch that will be available. So uh, the, the, the releases 
next that are available today. BI apps 11171 is only for, for the JD adverse on Oracle as a source. Uh, so that particular customer will have to wait for the patch which will support JD adverse on SQL Server to be available, which is uh, which will be before the end of the year. But uh, I cannot specify the exact timeline. Uh, it will be sooner uh, than later, but it, it will. This particular customer has to wait for the patch to be available. Uh, what about customers who are on the 796 version of BI apps? What would they need to do if they wanted to move or include uh, the student information analytics? That will be an upgrade for for customers. Uh, there's no on seven nine six with new content like uh, student information analytics. I think there's no easy choice um, at this point in time. They would migrate to ODI, and since there's no automated migration utilities available uh, via Oracle, then they will have to re-implement the current seven nine six uh, implementation to take advantage of student information analytics. And the customizations have to be migrated from 796 to the applications 11.1.1.7.1. Got it. And that's where a very experienced partner like KPI Partners comes into play, don't you think? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, this is not going to be a trivial exercise. Uh, and so uh, I, I, I would recommend any customer to uh, to engage with both Oracle and a, a, an experienced Oracle partner. Uh, Minaj, uh, is looking for a little bit more clarification on the roadmap uh, as it relates to Informatica and the BI apps. Um, can you give a little bit more information um, on what the roadmap um, regarding Informatica is? So Oracle uh, is committed to supporting uh, dual ETL strategies. So there are about 4,000 customers today on the 796B applications utilizing Informatica as a tool for ETL. Oracle uh, plans to build and provide content parity between what is available in ODI on 11171 and the next release, release 8, whatever content is available on the ODI based B applications will be made available on Informatica as a, as a tool of ETL. That release with the content in Informatica ETL will be available approximately about 12 months from now. A little beyond 12 months, but approximately 12 months. So you could be looking at a, uh, a summer of 2014 release with Informatica as an as a ETL tool with all the content that you see today in 11.1.1.7.1 and the release on ODI that will come up later in the year. So uh, all, all the new content that you see, the data model that is in this release will now be made available with Informatica around summer of 2014. Tom asks, are the ODI and Golden Gate options mutually exclusive or can they be combined? Uh, the Golden Gate option on ODI, um, this is, is an optional, it's a deployment option that Oracle provides for uh, all customers on BI applications 11.1.1.7.1 and higher on ODI. So the way it works is that you, the customer would, would purchase ODI uh, as, as, a, as an installable license. They would install ODI, uh, uh, purchase Golden Gate as an installable license, sorry, and, and that Golden Gate on, will be deployed on the source and on the targeted warehouse, but the ETL code uh, written in ODI can, is, is, there are smarts built into the ETI code to, to discover that there's a Golden Gate option enabled and Golden Gate is available, and the code will now adjust and actually produce the necessary configuration files for uh, taking advantage of Golden Gate, and also adjust the ETL. Instead of using the source, it will use the replicated copy of, of, of that particular so, source. So there's, there's the, all the software components, the ETL logic, everything is pre-built. Only the customer will only install Golden Gate on the source and target, and, and, and then this is turned on. It is pre-built. It's not, it's not separate. It's just that the platform, the Golden Gate platform, needs to be licensed and installed. Judith uh, would like uh, us to discuss how Oracle decided what metrics to create in the new student, student information analytics. So what, 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 did, what, did, what was the process that Oracle went through to uh, identify which metrics should be derived in student information analytics? So typically, the product management team interacts with a panel of uh, target customer end users. So in this case, 
the Oracle, uh, the applications product manager responsible for student information analytics from the team, interacted with a lot of universities. Uh, for example, they, they, they met with uh, uh, the use, user base in universities like Harvard and, and Stanford and, 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 and Berkeley. There, there are several different universities in, in the US, in the UK, uh, uh, in Asia Pacific, in Hong Kong, and other locations in India that they met and gathered the necessary uh, metrics. And they also paired it off against the EPM based early release that was uh, targeted for campus solutions. And so they, they, they combined what was available before with what is required by these end users, and then it came up with a list of metrics that it will support. Uh, Mitchell asks uh, How does the new version of the BI apps um, work alongside? or work with Oracle Exalytics? So BI Applications 11171 um, is not yet supported on Exalytics, but it will be certified uh, by the end of this month in June when the PS3 version of Exalytics is, is available. So on PS3, OBIE 11171 is certified. And by virtue of that certification, BI Apps 11171 will be available. So the way the deployment works is that um, you would install OBIE uh, in, in Exalytics and, and then use that domain, you would, you would also deploy the ODI and Configuration Managers as managed, managed services on, on either the choices on Exalytics or, if this, or the same domain with a different box, you can have your managed server ODI running on it. So there are different deployment options available for Exalytics, but the OBIE will be uh, the the, the OPIA component will be running on Exalytics. Data movement from your data warehouse into times 10 on Exalytics will be done through ODI. Is there a separate cost for ODI or Golden Gate? So the ODI, um, and typically for component dependencies in BI applications, they are part of the price, line, uh, price list as what we call as uh, application specific technologies. So OBIE 11117 is an AST licensing. There's also a part of the BI apps licensing model. ODI has a licensing model, which is an AST licensing, uh, but this is part of the price list for BI applications. These are all uh, available with the Oracle salespeople uh, with specific licensing models. So there is named user price uh, licensing for uh, both OBIE and for ODI along with BI applications. For ODI, uh, for, for Golden Gate today, um, the AST licensing is not yet approved, but it will be soon. So for Golden Gate, it is an, a licensing that is done outside of the applications. So they, the customer would purchase Golden Gate uh, enterprise licensing for the number of instances of the sources they would like to deploy, uh, and then use that uh, platform, Golden Gate, to, to utilize the Golden Gate option, SDS option. But in a month's time from now, Golden Gate also should be available as what we call as application-specific technology licensing. That would be normally cheaper than the enterprise licensing of a standalone platform. Why has Oracle uh, decided to make a move from Informatica to ODI? ODI is native technology for Oracle. Informatica is a third-party OEM uh, license. Typically, the, but think of this today with ODI, with, with, with Informatica, you got tooling that is on top of Informatica, like the Data Warehouse Administration Console, that orchestrates and, and makes up for certain perceived deficiencies on Informatica. So the release, because it's an external organization uh, and it's an OEM third party product, the turnaround cycles for enhancements that are required by uh, the BI applications users and, and the release roadmaps don't always align, so there's a lot of work to be done with the third party. But with ODI, it's internal. ODI is used in several other internal applications of BI, uh, other than BI with Oracle, like in Fusion, like in uh, several global business units or industry business units, and so a common technology stack that's all within Oracle, within the red stack is, is, is uh, Oracle's preference. And for many, many of our customers, uh, they would also prefer to stay within the Oracle technology stack. So ODI is the preferred tool of integration. Going forward, almost all of BI applications code will start with ODI, even though we will support Informatica as a tool of choice. The coding will be done on ODI and ported over to Informatica. And because ODI is pervasively used across several different components within Oracle. Great, thank you. So I think we have time for about one more. 
Um, this, the last question here is, uh, is, is from Tom. Um, has DAC been replaced by the new tools like the Configuration Manager and LPG? That's correct. So DAC provides a, a, a set of functionality, for example, like creating a data warehouse schema. Uh, it provides an ability to, to detect uh, the list of tasks necessary for running a particular subject area, uh, a module. It also provides functionality around how to uh, detect dependencies and construct a dependencies and create a, a plan for loading those set of target tables necessary. This functionality is spread across two different tools natively into ODI. That's one reason why we moved to ODI, because a lot of functionality can be put into the place where it belongs. In this case, creating a model is within the ODI. All the necessary metadata is in, inside the ODI. And there is a load plan generator plugin that can generate, detect dependencies, and generate an execution plan equivalent, which is called a load plan. So load plan is a unit of execution. And all of this can be managed to a thin client uh, via application configuration manager. So the, 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 the functionality is now within ODI and BI Application Configuration Manager. Thanks, Hari. We uh, greatly appreciate uh, all the insights. So that concludes the, the Q&A portion of the event. If you want to learn more about working with Oracle's BI applications, please reach out to us through kpipartners.com, and we will have a member of our customer care team assist you with any further questions you may have. I also invite you to subscribe to our new online series that examines Oracle BI Applications 11G. You can get notifications of all upcoming articles, on-demand recordings, ebooks, and webinars by clicking to kpipartners.com slash subscribe. Episode one of our series titled Overview of Oracle BI Applications 11.1.1.7.1 is currently available at kpipartners.com slash BI apps for on-demand viewing. That's kpipartners.com slash B-I-A-P-P-S. In addition to the archived recording of this webinar, we will be releasing two new episodes over the next several days called What's New in Financial Analytics? and what's new in project analytics. Once again, get notifications when we launch these by clicking to kpipartners.com slash subscribe. Registration is also now open for our July and August webinars through kpipartners.com slash events. We invite you to follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at KPI Partners. Thank you to everyone for joining us on today's webinar, and thank you to Vikas and Hari for presenting. Take care, everyone.